Hi, in this video I'll show you how to add or subtract months from a date. So maybe we have a situation where we want to kind of target some months out or look at some months back or we're doing some invoicing or something like that and we want to target uh, how many months out uh, we should charge or, or whatnot. So this is how you can do it. There's basically two examples I will show you how it's done and they're going to vary so it depends on how you see months. So the first example is using a function called eDate. And what the function does is it returns back a serial number of the date um, in the number of months before or after the start date. So let's say, for example, I will just use equal eDate and then open parentheses, tab to open the parentheses. This is going to be the start date. And maybe I want to look at one month from now. So one, actually one month from May or the start date. So I'll type that and press enter and it's going to return back a serial number of that month and that's the way Excel sees uh, dates as serial numbers but you can change that that's just a view so after you so after that's done you can select that go under the home tab uh, under the numbers group and in the drop down we're going to select short date and it's picked out uh, June 30th and the way it's picked it out there there's not really a June 31st so it's going to pick out the last day of the next month which is going to be June 30th. Now I'm going to contrast that with using the date function with um, other functions the year, month, and day functions. Let's see how that particular function works. So what the date function does it returns a number that represents the date in Excel and what we need to do is with, uh, with other functions the year, month, and day functions is kind of take those specific uh, values out from this combined date. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how that's done. So I'll just type equal date and in close in parentheses. So the year, I'm going to just type in uh, another function called the year function and I'm tab it to open it. So what it's going to do is when I select the cell, it's just going to take out that year 2014 and remove the rest of it, the month and the date. So I'm going to go close parentheses and comma. The next thing the date function is going to look for is the month. So I'm going to type in the month function tab to complete that and select this cell again so it's going to take out the month so it's going to take out that five there right so then I'm going to go ahead and take out the day so I'm going to go ahead and type a day function that's called day and go ahead and open parentheses and also reference uh, cell A2 here close parentheses and if I press enter it's going to say that oh I forgot to put a closing parentheses in there so I'll go ahead and click yes for Excel's suggestion and it's going to bring back the um, your serial number again uh, because Excel sees dates as serial numbers. All I need to do is go ahead and change this to short date and I'll see that it actually just brought back the date and the reason why I did that is just it's basically taking out those parameters the month, the day, the year and under the date function it's just combining it back and combining it back because we use the year, month, and day function. But in order to look ahead or subtract back a month what we need to do is just add plus one to the month here. So I'm going to go ahead and click it right after the closing parentheses under the month here and type plus one. So once I press enter, it's going to give us a different uh, date, 7 1 2014, versus the e date function, which gives June 30th. And the reason why it does that is it's going to look at months. It's going to look at months as a an addition of subtraction uh, in absolute in absolute terms. So it's going to see that there is no um, 631. So what's going to do? It's going to move to the next month. Basically, that's going to be there is the end of the month. In, in terms of months, since there's no 631, it's going to be the next month, which is uh, July. So it's going to depend how you see months. If you see months as 31 days, then you may be using this date function because it's basically 31 days um, would be falling into July 1st. But if you see months as really just a month and in terms of um, a calendar month, regardless of 3031, then you might want to use the e-date function. And one more last thing, as I mentioned, uh, you, you can go forward, you can also go backwards. So if I put, I want to go backwards, subtract a month, I can just put a minus sign here and we see that this goes back to April. And the same thing here, if I did, if I wanted to go back instead of forward, I can, instead of adding one, I can subtract one and we'll go back to May 1st. And you can see here that it actually just moved it back to the first day of May here. So there, there's some quirks in terms of how uh, this is used. So it depends how you would define months. So you can either use the e-date or use the date function with the year, month, and day functions here. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.